the F-150 Lightning can't do truck stuff. No, this is not an F-150 Lightning, but I do have a reservation to turn this into one. This is a 2017 F-150 Lariat, and in a couple months behind me will be a 2023 electric Lariat F-150. But I just keep seeing this thing over and over and over again in uh, like the Facebook uh, F-150 groups, in the uh, forums and stuff, and right here on YouTube, and it's that the F-150 Lightning can't do truck stuff. Why would anyone buy this truck if it can't do truck stuff? I think to kind of dive in, we need to an analyze two things, and it's what is truck stuff, and who are these truck guys? Because I'm more fascinated by these fellas that are just frankly gatekeeping owning a truck, which is hilarious to me. It's like, you can only own a truck nowadays if you're using it for hard manual labor. And in fact, my theory and kind of why I'm making this video is most truck owners now, whether you like it or not, are using it for basic stuff like me. I'm guilty of that. So roast me in the comments all you want. I'm not a hardcore truck guy, but I love my truck and I can't wait to own another and another. So let's, let's talk about it. Okay, so talking about these truck guys, I'm going to try to put myself in their shoes and try to make sense of the situation, right? So they're, they're, they're being fed all these headlines that are saying, you know, specifically gas vehicles being taken away by the year 2030. And that headline, if you don't read into it, it, it could be scary if you're a lifelong, you know, petrol loving fella. And that's totally understandable. It's just worth kind of diving in. And the first thing to remember is <laughs> that's almost 10 years away and it also doesn't ban gas vehicles and only two states have adopted this it's california and new york so I'd, I'd assume most of you guys watching this probably won't even be affected at all i mean sure maybe more st states will follow but if they do that's just the sale of new vehicles and they look at that and they combine it with one other thing and it's the fact that trucks right now that are electric like the f-150 lightning and i guess the rivian r1t are the only real available <laughs> trucks right now um and and they can't i guess live up to like well what i'm sitting in something that is gas heck this one has a double uh gas tank in fact that it can tow all day i got an extended six foot bed like you can't do that with the f-150 lightning because it's limited by range it's limited by technology so there's two things we're banking on by 2030, when that's gonna cancel. So first of all, battery technology. There's so many promising startups and innovations and, and uh, technology that's on the way that's going to help us take that towing number that, well, let's say it, it's roughly like 150 miles. It basically cuts the range in half. So on average, the Ford F-150 Lightning gets about 300 miles and towing a major load, you're gonna cut that in half. And yeah, that sucks. But we're gonna keep improving on aerodynamics. We're gonna improve on battery technology. We're gonna get the, the weight down and the uh, capacity up. Is it there right now? No, and that is why, you know, some of these hardcore anti-electric truck things, you know, they, they kind of hold weight because we're not there yet. And, and I totally admit that. So looking at it that way, these, these guys are probably like, well, how are they going to force me to <laughs> buy an electric truck in the year 2030 when I can only tow 150 pounds or 150 miles? As I just mentioned, that won't be the case at that point. And also, you can get a year 2029 Ford F-350 fully loaded. That probably will be uh, amazing and last you the next million years. And I mean, just imagine what actual gas technology will be uh, at that point, too. I bet you can get probably 50 miles per gallon in a Super Duty. Who knows? So all that to be said, there's also hybrids to think about. Technically, these laws, hybrids would count. I mean, it's a little gray on the exact, like, fully electric ad adaptation or whatever, but my guess is for trucks to work in the near future, I totally admit they 
probably should look at more hybrid options like 50 50 battery and gas operated and that works great for when you're in town and you never have to even touch your gas tank and then when you're doing these heavy loads and you're going off and you're going to do your thing well you just tap into the gas and that will be probably where a lot of manufacturers go so worst case scenario that's probably where we'll be when this uh you know ban which i don't even think is a good thing to call it but the technical end of gas sales there'll be probably mostly hybrids on the road that whether you're anti-electric or not you're gonna love a super duty that has all the same power that you have now but with like twice as much range and and, and t half as much money you're gonna be spending on gas like come on you can't honestly admit that you don't want something like that unless you're this next group of people who are just blindly going to hate any electric vehicles for no reason and sadly what I've learned is these folks, there's just no tapping into these guys. There's no arguing with them. There's no showing facts. There's no showing science. I really want to shout out the channel Engineered Explain, Engineering Explained, one of my favorite YouTube channels. And he does such a good job of like, you know, drilling into like the, the big EV myths. Like, uh, can the grid actually handle if everyone went electric? Like that's a big anti-EV talking point. And he does the math. He, he dives into every scientific bit of it and really breaks it down and proves that, yeah, we could. It'll take some time because uh, adaption is going to take a, a slower amount of time. And that's kind of what he proves. If everyone switched tomorrow and we start charging every single house on the block, sure, we'd have problems, but that just won't happen. So it's really worth diving into that and just learning about, you know, some of these myths. And like another great video is kind of re refuting the fact that, well, hey, aren't all these EVs more um harmful to the environment because of the mining of the the minerals and all, and all of those arguments that everyone loves to pull up on like hey you're actually not saving the environment with an electric because you're mining these precious minerals you're ruining environments and to that interesting enough in some cases that's absolutely true but in most cases it's not so uh, i'll link those videos because they've really helped me um, understand what it means to own an electric vehicle and, and learn just like the straight scientific facts around it, which you should probably do <laughs> before you argue one way or another. And on that note, I'm not anti-gas. I mean, look what I'm sitting in. I already just told you guys, this thing's got a double gas tank on it. I have twice as much capacity <laughs> as most F-150s. Like, yeah, I'm a gas guy. I, and behind me, my wife, she has a Tahoe. Two of the least eco-friendly vehicles in the world, but I still love electric cars. I think they're the best, and I can't wait to own one. Again, I technically owned a Tesla for a year, but I don't have it anymore. So enough about truck guys and, and, and trying to put myself in their shoes and just explaining all that stuff. Um, that was my empathy portion, and I think that you know makes sense, right? But now let's talk about this new segment of truck guys, kind of like me. I never really was interested in trucks until the F-150 Lightning came about. That's why I'm sitting in this thing is because I just couldn't get an F-150 Lightning fast enough and I became in love with the idea of owning a truck. And I'm not one of these guys who are out working and loading this up on the daily. I just, I'm not. I'm not going to pretend to be either. It's just, I, I truly believe the majority of truck buyers are like me. They use this bed probably twice, once every two weeks max. That's what I do. My family has an e-bike business, for instance. So I need to load up bikes like probably once a month and I need a lot of room and it saves a bunch of trips having a truck. So right there, it basically pays for itself. Hey, see, Great Lakes e-bikes, nice. I mean, I also use it, from, I'm building a shed in the backyard and I've made hundreds of trips to Menards or Home Depot and this has saved me. I've not had to make thousands of trips in the Tahoe because I got a six and a half foot bed. I could fit it all. It's great. You know, little things like that, not only that, just like being a dad and having a family. Come look at this. When I take the kids in the family places, I gotta take this giant stroller here this wagon sometimes and another stroller plus i've got so many other kids toys and stuff that we often take whenever we go anywhere 
and I don't have to worry about it. I just throw it in the bed. And then I have got two car seats in the back and there's so much room. It's like the most practical vehicle in the world. I mean, other than gas mileage, but oh wait, that leads me into my next point, the electric truck. So the line, it can't do truck things. I really am trying to dig into that and I'd concede that it can't do truck thing and that's towing, like I mentioned. And it brings me to a point of in EV, the EV world in general, we are still at the very beginning of this. And that's kind of why I think it's a little unfair to over critique it right now. I think any EV fan isn't going to argue the downsides of owning an EV right now. We understand it. I mean, owning a Tesla, the range thing is a lot to get used to. I, I learned a lot by owning that. If you're not willing to deal with that, it's not a good time to buy EVs. But that doesn't mean it won't be someday. And in fact, there's so many great bills and like legislation that's going on right now that's going to get us there. It might take a little bit though. So it's a good time to maybe keep an eye on EVs, watch the progressions until it meets your, um, your, your checklist of the things that you need in a vehicle, and then it's time for you to consider one. There's no rush to do it now. In fact, it's like the, the most annoying time to buy an electric vehicle in the world because like charging stations, frankly, they kind of suck right now. Availability is insane and overpriced, and it's just like people can't make these things enough especially trucks. They're so hard to get and they're marked up because there's so many of them. It's just not a good time. And all of those things are leading to bad headlines that people are just running with because it's an easy win for the anti-EV agenda. And it sucks. It really sucks because we're just not looking at all the facts. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, you know what? There's a certain type of person in the world who just refuses to look at change as a positive thing. I'm the opposite. I love change. I'm addicted to it. In fact, I probably love it too much. <laughs> but like any success in life I've had, it's because I embraced change fast. Like I'm not talking about buying a vehicle or anything. I'm talking about like, you know, learning a new skill or something like that. Like change is good. It doesn't have to be bad. Like you're never too old to start embracing it either. Just because you've done things for, you know, a million years one way, you can always change and try it a new way. And you know what? It's probably better by now. And it's good to learn new things. Um, that was a little off subject. Let's get back. So you've probably seen all the statistics by now about how the F-150 Lightning has converted, I believe, I think it's up to 12% of the Tesla buyers into the truck. And they're converting non-truck buyers even more, like me. Like that's, what, again, as I mentioned, it sparked my interest in the truck. So I think... It kind of proves the point that the practicality of a truck has now expanded this original use of being a gritty out in the field <laughs> on the farm or whatever these hardcore truck guys are doing. And they are converting to more guys like me, like the total people who actual truck guys hate. <laughs> but like, why should we not be able to enjoy these vehicles, right? Like it's made my life easier. I mean, I bought it. I'm allowed to do what I want, right? I think everyone is. And that's why this argument is kind of silly. And that's the whole point of this video, actually. When you look at the F-150 Lightning on paper to the average consumer, maybe you own a boat. Maybe you have a family and you go on trips. And that's like, and, and, and you own a small business, maybe. You could still, every single thing I just mentioned could totally be done in the F-150 Lightning. Towing the boat is fine. I mean, even here in Michigan, like the furthest that you could go up north, probably going to be maybe 200, 300 miles if you go way up there. So yeah, you'd have to stop to charge probably. And that does suck. It means you're adding probably 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the charger, onto your trip. So that might not be practical and therefore maybe you shouldn't just buy, you just don't buy the truck. But for everyone else, it really is perfect because you can tow in town, you can charge, you can use your home charger, and you can get all the benefits of electric vehicle because frankly, most of us aren't doing the hard towing, the hard labor. We're just looking for a really efficient, practical vehicle. And it doesn't mean it's not worth the purchase. And it doesn't mean it can't do truck stuff because in fact, it really can. It's one of the best towing machines out there. 
Obviously, the range is not great. We've admitted that. But it can do it. And it can do it well, especially in short bursts. And as I mentioned, if you need to go longer, you know, we, we've, we've kind of already talked about that argument, right? You just don't buy this vehicle. It isn't ready. We admit that. But it will be. Technology will be there sooner than we know it. So if I had to sum all this up, it's like, why does everybody like, like what's going on? Like, why is everyone such a bummer to each other? I mean, just because this vehicle won't work for you, like, why do you care what anyone else buys? Like, are you that afraid that someone's going to knock on your door and take away your, your freaking big old diesel truck or something, man? Like nothing's going to happen to you. It doesn't affect you. You don't have to pay attention at all. Like, even if they did ban gas vehicles, that's still eight years away. And by then, like I mentioned, there will be something else you can buy. Like, it'll be fine. I promise. Like, I just want us all to get along. <laughs> Is that so hard? I don't know, guys. Anyway, I just really felt like rambling about this. So <laughs> hopefully you guys don't mind uh, videos like this because I'm going to try to do it a little more. Um, I guess I'm going to end this video because the package guys here. Uh, yeah, I gotta get this. Bye.